In this video, we're reviewing illegally batted balls and how the batter's box applies to our games. So we'll start by reviewing the definitions and rules, and then we'll jump into this week's case plays. Now, if you want to see how well you can do on this week's quiz before going through the review with me, you can find a link to it in the video description. Hi everyone, Patrick Farber from GHSA Baseball, Umpire Development, and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires develop their knowledge and skills. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out the rest of our videos. Also, if you want next week's case plays emailed to you, there's a link in the description to sign up. Now let's start by reviewing the definition of the batter's box. Well, 2-7-2. The batter's box is the four foot by six foot area in which the batter shall stand when batting. The lines are part of the box. We all know the general concept of the batter's box, but it's worth noting that the definition does give us one very important fact. The lines are part of the box. This means that if a batter takes a stance with part of his foot on the chalk line of the box, he is still considered in the box so long as no part of his foot is touching the ground outside of the batter's box. But what do we do if the batter is taking a stance with part of his foot out of the box? There are two possible outcomes to this, but ultimately the first should be the only step we ever need. The first step is to call time and ask the batter to take a stance with his feet entirely inside the box. And I've never seen a time where a player said no to this or failed to comply. However, if a player does refuse, the penalty is to issue a delay of game. This comes with the penalty of a strike called on the batter. The rules book also includes a diagram of the batter's box, and while you don't necessarily need to know all the details, it's important to note that the distance from the batter's box to the edge of home plate is six inches. So now we've covered where the batter must take his position in the batter's box, but let's break down how the batter's box applies to an illegally batted ball. Rule 7-3-2. A batter shall not hit the ball while either foot or knee is touching the ground completely outside the lines of the batter's box or touching home plate. The penalty for this is that the ball becomes dead immediately and the batter is out. Note that the rule says either a foot or knee would have to be illegal for this to be a violation, and the violation occurs once the batter hits the ball. This means if the batter is out of the box but either does not swing or swings and misses, there is no violation of the rule. After this, the rule gives two different options for what makes it a violation. The first violation is that the foot or knee is entirely outside of the box and in contact with the ground. So two takeaways from this part. One, the foot must be entirely out. If the foot is on the ground and mostly out of the box, but just a little bit is on the chalk line of the box, they are legal. Two, if the foot is entirely over the area outside of the box, but not touching the ground yet, then they are still considered within the box and legal. Now, the second violation option is if the batter hits the ball while touching home plate. And while your initial thought is probably, well, of course, the plate is outside of the batter's box, remember that the box is only six inches from the plate. So it is conceivable that a player could partially be in the box while also being in contact with the plate. In that scenario, the touching of the plate would make this an illegally batted ball. Now, in enforcing this rule, I want to tell you exactly how it's going to happen in your game when on the dish. You'll have a batter in either box, and when the pitcher begins his delivery, the batter will square to bunt. You'll notice when he does this that he brings his back foot forward and towards the plate while squaring his shoulders and hips to the pitcher. When he does this, it will impact your view from the slot, and you'll mostly be looking at the back of the batter. So you'll take a peek down at his feet and see it's clearly outside of the lines of the box. Once you see that, make sure that the bat contacts the ball and then immediately call time and send any runners back and call the batter out. Now, you should know that this will inevitably lead to the offensive coach coming out and he'll drop some line about how can you see that when you're watching the ball and your response will always be, well, since your batter came out of the box and blocked my view, I had nowhere else to look but his position. Then he'll turn around and leave and question how his brilliant and original line failed to work. Now, the second part of the illegally batted ball is what happens when the ball is contacted twice. Rule 8-4-1D. The batter runner is out when, after hitting or bunting a ball, he intentionally contacts the ball with the bat a second time in fair or foul territory. The ball is dead and no runners advance. In the case of a foul ball, it must have a chance to become fair in the umpire's judgment. So if we have a batter intentionally make contact with the ball a second time, they would be called out. However, if the ball does not have a chance of becoming fair, then the infraction is ignored. With all that, the rules also provide an outcome if the second contact is accidental. 8-4-1-D2 
If the bat and ball accidentally come in contact with each other a second time while the batter is holding the bat in the batter's box, it is a foul ball. So now that we've reviewed the rules and definitions, let's cover this week's case plays. Case play number one. B1 takes his stance in the batter's box with his back foot entirely within the chalk of the batter's box and his front foot entirely on and inside of the chalk of the batter's box. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is illegal, the batter is out once the pitcher delivers a pitch, C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count once the pitcher delivers the pitch, or D, this is illegal, instruct the batter to take a legal position in the box before the pitcher delivers. The correct answer here is A. Remember, the lines of the box are considered within the box. Case play number two. B1 takes his stance in the batter's box with his back foot entirely within the chalk of the batter's box and his front foot partially on and partially outside of the chalk of the batter's box. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is illegal, the batter's out once the pitcher delivers a pitch, C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count once the pitcher delivers the pitch, or D, this is illegal, instruct the batter to take a legal position in the box before the pitcher delivers. The correct answer here is D. This is illegal because the batter has to take a position that is entirely within the lines of the box. That said, there isn't a penalty of a strike or an out associated with violating this rule. We as the umpire simply need to instruct them to get within the box. Failure to do so could result in a delay of game. Case play number three. B1 starts with a legal stance in the batter's box. When the pitch is delivered, the batter strides forward and his foot lands outside of the batter's box when the pitch passes him. He does not swing. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is illegal, the batter is out, or C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count? The correct answer here is A. This is legal because he did not make contact with the ball. Case play number four. B1 starts with a legal stance in the batter's box. When the pitch is delivered, the batter strides forward and his foot lands outside of the batter's box when the pitch passes him. He swings and misses. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is illegal, the batter is out, or C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count? The correct answer is A. This is still legal because again, even though the batter swings, the batter never makes contact with the ball. Case play number five. B1 starts with a legal stance in the batter's box. When the pitch is delivered, the batter strides forward and his foot lands half outside of the batter's box and half touching the chalk of the batter's box when he swings and fouls off the ball. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is illegal, the batter is out, or C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count? The correct answer here is A, this is legal. For it to be illegal, his entire foot would have to be outside of the lines of the batter's box when his bat makes contact with the ball. Case play number six. B1 starts with a legal stance in the batter's box. When the pitch is delivered, the batter's foot is entirely outside of the batter's box, but has not yet touched the ground when he swings and fouls off the ball. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is illegal, the batter is out, or C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count? The correct answer here is A. This is legal because while the batter's foot is in the air above the outside of the batter's box, because it is not in contact with the ground, he is not in violation of the rule. Case play number seven. B1 starts with a legal stance in the batter's box. When the pitch is delivered, the batter's foot is entirely outside of the batter's box and in contact with the ground when he swings and fouls off the ball. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is illegal, the batter is out, or C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count. The correct answer here is B. This is illegal and the batter is out. Because the batter's entire foot is outside of the batter's box and in contact with the ground, we have them in violation of the rule and this is an illegally batted ball. Case play number eight. With R1 on first, B2 illegally hits a pitch that goes towards F6 and F4 obstructs R1 advancing to second base. Is this A, the ball became dead at the time of B2's violation, B, this is a delayed dead ball, the defense can potentially turn a double play. Or C, this is a delayed dead ball, the illegal action of the batter is nullified by the obstruction. The correct answer here is A. This is an immediate dead ball and the batter will be out. All other runners will return to their position at the time of the pitch. Case play number nine. After bunting the ball, B1's bat, which is still in B1's hand, unintentionally strikes the ball a second time in fair territory while B1 is still in the batter's box. 
Is this A, this is a foul ball, or B, this is an out? The correct answer is A. This is a foul ball because it's accidental contact while the batter is still in the box in control of the bat. Case play number 10. B1 squares the bunt and hits the pitch. The batted ball bounces off the plate and hits B1's bat a second time while B1 is holding the bat in the batter's box. Is this A, this is a foul ball, B, this is legal so long as it was not intentional and play continues, or C, this is illegal, the batter is out. Again, the correct answer here is A, this is a foul ball because it's accidental contact while the batter is still holding the bat and inside the batter's box. So there you have it, our review of the batter's box and illegally batted balls. If you found this video helpful for you or your association, I'm always looking for ideas for new videos or topics you would like to see. So feel free to send them my way in the comments or via email. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the field.